CRT Anomalies is a channel on YouTube. The description for the account reads, Here I upload strange videos I have on my VHS recorder. As you will come to find out, these are not your typical home videos, but instead something much more sinister. Here I will break down the story surrounding CRT Anomalies to the best of my ability. Keep in mind, the series at this point in time is incomplete, so I will be going off of the limited knowledge that I have. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoy content like this, please be sure to subscribe. All the footage seen in this video belongs to CRT Anomalies, and I will link their account in the description below. Video 1, 1986, opens with an old-fashioned menu screen. We are given the option to choose between three segments. We select the first option. This takes us to a vintage soap ad. Once it ends, we are shown a news logo, the big font reading 62. Ominous music plays in the background before the nightly schedule fades on screen. An error seemingly occurs, however, as multiple texts tell us that there are no highlights for the night. We are soon shown an emergency message detailing eyewitness accounts of high winds near Webb Mountain. Authorities advise us to stay indoors for the time being. We cut to a logo appearing on screen. It's a large eye with text reading, Community Watch. They then show us various surveillance cam footage from around a neighborhood. All appears to be quiet, as it is just past midnight. But suddenly, a dark figure can be seen standing in Patriot Park. They slowly grow closer and closer to the security camera. The footage distorts as a mangled face peers into the lens and at us, the audience. The tape abruptly comes to an end. What we can gather from this episode is that our information is coming from a station known as 62, we are assumingly in a town situated at the base of Webb Mountain, where dangerous weather is occurring. Community Watch also has an undisclosed number of cameras situated around the town, and some sort of supernatural figure is aware of this. In the second episode, titled Video 2 2000, we open with the menu screen before in the previous. Only this time, we select Segment 2. We are introduced to text reading Matenga Airways. Our flight is currently in session, and our destination is Chuk Lagoon. At two and a half minutes in, we can hear audio of a flight attendant. The sound of the interior cabin of the airplane creaks before suddenly a loud crash is heard. The passengers cry out in fear and in terror as the plane plummets from the sky. The audio cuts out and the picture distorts. Moving forward, it will be important to note that the date of this crash is September of 2000. Episode 3 is titled Video 3 1964. After selecting the third segment on the menu screen, we are given a slideshow presentation from the Central Intelligence Agency. This specific presentation is put on by the Directorate of Science and Technology and is top secret information. The next slide reads MK Ultra Protocol regarding administering hallucinogenic chemicals. MK Ultra was an illegal human experimentation program designed and conducted by the US Central Intelligence Agency. Its purpose was to develop procedures and identify drugs that could be used during interrogations to weaken people in order to enforce confessions through brainwashing and psychological torture. It began in 1953 and concluded in 1964. The drugs showcased in the slideshow begin with LSD, temazepam, psilocybin, and sepolamine. A disclaimer slide following this list reads, When interacting with subjects of subprojects, a coat of utmost chariness must at all times be forced. Any form of senselessness and lack of precaution may put the program's future and success at risk. Any aberration in the subject's behavior must at all times be noted, filed, and subsequently recognized as a risk. 
These factors are why the project only reconnoiters low-risk individuals, individuals who are easily put in compromising positions, as to ease the subsequent blackmailing process. The next slide explains that an extensive and fundamental psychological evaluation takes place after administering the drugs. This is often done by stimulating the subject's brain with large amounts of visual stimuli, causing light amounts of excessive neural oscillation. The administrators of the tests have two hours before the drugs wear off. Researches found that during this time, the subject can disclose personal information while remembering little to nothing following the experience. The following slide takes a slightly darker turn. The mission statement says that should a subject resist during this time, excessive force may be utilized to protect the covertness of the project. It also states that this covertness must be prioritized over human life, as the project could save many lives in the future. Should the subject act violently, large quantities of an anesthetic will be administered. In instances such as these, protocol G6A54 is the standard. The next slide is highly distorted, and some of the information is difficult to read. Its purpose, however, is to inform us that should protocol G6A54 fail, G6A53 involves giving the subject theopetanol before putting them in an isolation chamber. The slideshow ends as we are given locations for the aforementioned program. The list ranges in states such as California, New York, Massachusetts, and even extends to Canada. Towards the bottom, we are given two locations listed under TTPI. This stands for Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands, which is a United Nations Trust Territory in Micronesia from 1947 to 1994, following Japan's downfall in World War II. One of the territories listed, Chuk Lagoon, is of particular interest given that the flight from the previous episode was headed towards this location prior to crashing. Video 4 1979 opens with a new set of segments. The first is selected and takes place on June 24, 1979. We hear the sound of footsteps on gravel. Text reads, Near Kelly Mountain, located in Idaho. A notable departure from Chuk Lagoon or the rest of the Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands. New text reads, the following tape led to a lot of trouble near Idaho Falls. A friend of the author gave me this tape. She said that he feared for his life. She has not heard from him since. God bless his soul. We then listen as the footsteps vary in pace. At one point, it sounds almost as if the person recording is running. In the distance, amidst the usual sounds of the forest, we can hear a distant screeching. The video comes to an end as the cameraman is seemingly attacked by something. The description of the video reads, The truth will be revealed. Rest in peace. You will be missed. As mentioned before, while the video does not take place in the Pacific Islands, its location is still important. Both locations, the Pacific Islands and Idaho, can be found on the list shown in the previous episode. These are both locations where the MKUltra protocol is in effect. The character whose footsteps are heard in the video, the author, was in possession of some sort of tape. I assume this tape showed some sort of exposition of the protocol going on in the area. The author, in the video, is now being hunted for the restricted knowledge that they possess. A commenter on this video made mention of the following. I looked at the location listed, Kelly Mountain, and saw that the elevation level is 8,826, which was the same elevation as the plane that crashed. Starting to see a pattern here. In video 5, 1992, we select segment 2. The video opens with a gold logo reading Open Palms. 
We then transition to a children's television program called Open Pals, which is supposedly the number one kids show in all of Idaho. The show consists of characters who are sock puppets. The ones in the particular episode we are watching are a young girl named Lisa and a priest named Father Maxwell. Father Maxwell states that the episode will be about love and refers to varying Bible verses that depict God's intentions for love. Maxwell quotes Leviticus before stating that people of the same sex can love each other like brothers and sisters, but not like lovers. This action is a sin and will send them to hell. In a transition, we see Lisa approach a boy named Clyde. Clyde asks Lisa if she has seen any men in black suits knocking on her door recently. She says no. Clyde then goes into detail, telling Lisa that the men in suits asked if his parents had seen any people without skin recently. Another character soon shows up, stating that they too were approached by men in suits, and warns the others not to let the men in suits inside their home. Clyde, however, has already done this. Unsure of what to do about the situation, the friends decide to visit Father Maxwell and ask him for advice. Father Maxwell says that the newly built laboratory on the outskirts of town has been conducting research and looks directly at the audience before telling the children in the audience not to investigate the matter any further. The footage then begins to distort as the episode comes to a close. It is clear from this episode that the government seems to be reaching out to the community, attempting to diffuse any sort of suspicion as to their intentions in the town. As of writing this video, Government Horror Show is the final upload from CRT Anomalies. It is notable because it is the first video to depart from the usual title format of an entry number and a date. More on that later. The description of Government Horror Show reads, They are after me. Help me. The following is composed of various photographs from what appears to be the inside of the MK Ultra laboratories. Images of distorted, grotesque beings are displayed. One of them features the silhouette of a being very similar to what we saw in the first video. Could this be the subject that escaped and was seen on the surveillance cameras? The other photographs, however, show what appears to be doctors, scientists of some sort as well. Others show distorted faces, crying out in pain. As the last photograph scans onto screen, we see the close-up of what looks like a face. Whether this is the subject of one of MKUltra's experiments, or a scientist gone mad, is still up for debate. The video glitches before it comes to an end. Government Horror Show was uploaded just over a year ago. Whether or not the creator will continue is uncertain. Like most analog series, the creator has chosen to stay anonymous. The story leaves us with a lot of questions. Let's start out by taking into consideration each of the dates posted at the end of the titles and put them in chronological order. The first upload is from 1964 and introduces us to the MKUltra program. We are given information about their mission, which is to test drugs that can force confessions out of people in an interrogation setting. Their subjects are usually people who no one would notice if they ever went missing. They also have a wide range of locations, such as Idaho, where the majority of our story takes place. After that, we jump to 1979, where an author of an unspecified outlet fears for his life as he is pursued by the CIA for attempting to disclose information regarding MK Ultra's presence in Idaho. What information did he have exactly? Well, it's uncertain, but I think it has something to do with the following. 1986's upload shows surveillance camera footage of an unknown anomaly in a neighborhood. A news broadcast also covers bad weather on the rise near Webb Mountain. At this point in time, I'm inclined to believe that this weather forecast was just a diversion to get people's attention away from the escaped anomaly. Diversion tactics are used multiple times by the CIA in this story. 
1992's upload is another example of this. The children's television show, Open Pals, gives a message directed towards children, telling them not to investigate the happenings connected to MK Ultra. The final upload in chronological order would be 2000's audio of a plane crash near Chuk Lagoon, another location for human experiments by MK Ultra. The outlier in this situation is the government horror show video, which has no date attached to it. It could be perceived, however, given the video's description, that we are seeing the evidence that the author was going to release prior to being captured, photographic evidence of the horrors happening in the Idaho facility. As of now, that is all the information we have regarding CRT anomalies. Given the evidence in the videos, I'm not even sure what CRT stands for in this context. If you think you know or have any theories regarding CRT anomalies, please let me know down in the comments below. I will leave a link to their channel down in the description box as well. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and please make sure to subscribe for more content like this.